What's up guys, I'm Marcin from RossBarTech.com. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. Hopefully you guys are doing well too. Now I have an exciting video for you guys. You're gonna love it. Now if you like retro games, like the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and you have a Raspberry Pi, you're gonna love this because you can take your Raspberry Pi and turn it into a retro gaming PC. And it's pretty simple. You need a Raspberry Pi. Now you're gonna need a USB controller. Mine looks like the NES, and it's a USB controller because it has a USB end and it will be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi. They have a lot of these. Now they have a lot of these to look like other controllers. Now they have one that looks like a Sega Genesis controller, one that looks like a Super Nintendo controller, one that looks like a Nintendo 64 controller. I'm gonna leave a link to this uh, in the description. Now just click on that link, go to the Amazon search, just type in the system you want plus USB and you will be able to find all those controllers. All right guys, so now it's time to install RetroPie on our Raspberry Pi 3. It's not that hard. I'm gonna open up a browser. There's three things we're gonna download. And uh, retro pie, here we go. And we go to downloads. Okay, so the first thing you want to download is retro pie, and you're going to navigate to retropie.org.uk forward slash downloads. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. Now, download the one that applies to you. If you have a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, you're going to download this one. If you have a Raspberry Pi 0 or 1, you're going to download that one. Since we have a 2 or a 3, we have a Raspberry Pi 3, we're going to download this one. I'm going to click on download. It's a 600 megabyte file, depending on your internet speed. It should take a couple of minutes to download. Now, I already finished downloading mine, so I'm not gonna pay attention to that one. So I'm gonna show you where I downloaded mine. I downloaded it in this folder I called RetroPie. You guys could do the same thing. Just memorize where you downloaded that file. Now we're gonna open up our browser again. Now the second thing we need to download is something called Win32 Disk Imager. This is gonna allow us to burn our ISO file we just downloaded to our micro SD card so that we can connect it to our Raspberry Pi 3 and, and boot RetroPi. It's sourceforge.net forward slash projects forward slash Win32 Disk Imager. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You wanna click on this and download it. It's gonna take a couple of seconds to download. And once it's finished downloading, install it. I'm not gonna show you how to install it. You guys know how to install stuff. If you're thinking of tinkering with Raspberry Pi, so you should know how to install a program. I installed mine, so I'm just gonna skip it. And now the next thing we need to download, if you don't already have like a uh, zipping or a WinWarring software, is downloading Win, R A R WinWar. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description. You're gonna to wanna to download whether you have a 32-bit operating system or a 64-bit. I have a 64-bit, so I clicked on this one. If you have a 32-bit, you're gonna click on that one. Download it, install it. It's cool. It's gonna allow you to extract our ISO file. So you're gonna need that. If you if you already have it, you don't need to download. If you have like something like 7-zip or or WinZip or something, you don't need it, but I recommend this if you don't have it already. So download it, install it. Now we're gonna move on to our next step. Now the next step is to take our micro SD card connected to our computer because we're gonna to need to flash it. Now to do that, we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is open up. To do that, the first thing we're gonna do is we'll open up Win32 Disk Imager. Now we're gonna make sure that your SD card is connected to your port in your computer, right? Th then make sure you select the right drive letter once you finish selecting the right driver letter, you're gonna search. You're gonna click on this button to search for your uh, image file. I mine's is in a desktop right here, and um, I save mine in a folder called RetroPie. This is it right here. So we're gonna hit open. Now we're gonna click on write, then click on yes. Now this is gonna take like five minutes or more. It depends on how fast your computer runs. If this pops up wanting you to like uh, format your disk, don't do it. Just let this finish. Don't worry about that. So it should take like two to three minutes, maybe five minutes, again, depending on how fast your computer is. All right, now it's finished, click on OK. Now we're, we're gonna close this. We're gonna take our micro SD card and we're gonna connect it to our Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 1, 2, whatever Raspberry Pi you're using, right? Just connect it. Now you wanna make sure you have a keyboard, you have a mouse, you have power, you have internet. If you want to use the Wi-Fi, don't connect a ethernet cord because later on I'm going to show you how to connect this to the Wi-Fi. But if you want to use your ethernet port, make sure you connect your ethernet port. Uh, make sure you have a gamepad selected right here. I'm using this one. Now, if you guys have a Xbox controller with a USB, like with one of these USB things, you can use this, it'll work. But since we're playing, or since we're using RetroPie and I want to play retro games, I brought this. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description. This is basically a NES controller that has a USB end, so we can use this to make sure you connect all that to your Raspberry Pi. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, guys, so now I powered up the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it's running. And uh, if you guys are wondering how I'm able to capture this, 
I'm using a capture card. It's called the AV.io. I, I got this sent to me for a review and it's freaking amazing. I did a video on this and you guys could go back and look at my uh, previous videos like maybe a couple months back and you'll find the AV.io review where I show you guys how to set up the AV.io and uh, connect things like Raspberry Pi so you can uh, capture them on your computer screen. This is perfect for me because I do a lot of videos and tutorials on the Raspberry Pi so this is perfect for me and I use something called OBS. It's free. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is it, it's gonna detect that you have a game uh, gamepad or a controller connected. So it wants you to hold down a button, right? So I'm gonna hold down a button, hold it down. I'm using the Xbox, by the way, just because most most of you guys have a Xbox controller, I'm sure. If not, you can get one, or you can use that uh, this gamepad, this Nintendo gamepad, right? The one I showed you earlier. But I'm just gonna use the Xbox for now because it's, it's a lot faster. So uh, now it wants us to map these buttons, so I'm going to map them right now. All you have to do is press the button. It, it says D-pad up, so I'm going to hold D-pad up and it's going to map it. So I'm just going to keep doing it. Hold D-pad down, right? Hold D-pad left. Hold D-pad right. The start. Select. A. B. All right, so I'm finished configuring, so I'm just gonna click on OK. The first thing we, we're gonna wanna do is use the gamepad we just configured. Scroll down. If you don't have a uh, ethernet cable connected to this and you wanna use your Wi-Fi, scroll down and click on Wi-Fi. Let it run. Then where it says connect to a Wi-Fi network, click on that. Find your Wi-Fi network. This one's, mine says right here, Rosmertech. Then using a keyboard that you have connected to the Raspberry Pi, I recommend getting like a wireless mouse and keyboard set. It comes with a dongle. It's, it's, it'll save you a lot of time. So I'm gonna put in my password. It's connecting right now. All right, so we're gonna click on exit and go back. Now, again, you could skip this step if you're gonna use your ethernet cable. If your ethernet cable is connected, and it's working, then you're good to go. Now, the first step is to like run all the updates. So we're gonna scroll down to where it says Raspberry Pi setup here. I'm gonna click on okay. Then we're gonna scroll down to where it says update all installed packages. Click on that. Click on yes. Now you have to be connected to the internet for this to work. Click on okay. Now it's gonna install some packages. This might take like 30 minutes. If it's taking a long time, don't worry about it. Let it run in the background. Once it's finished installing, we're gonna come right back. Now that everything is finished updating, we're going to go to RetroPie setup, right? Then we're gonna go to manage packages. Then we're gonna scroll down to where it says manage experimental packages. Click on that. Scroll down, I think it's the second to last one. And keep going down until you get to the end. And it's, I think, 825, the RetroPie Manager, click on it. We want to install this. Then click on Install from Source. And again, you have to make sure you're connected to the internet for this to work. And basically, what the RetroPie Manager, it's going to allow us to remotely access our Raspberry Pi from our desktop. As long as it's connected to the network, we can remotely access the Raspberry Pi, and I'll show you once we're done. And uh, and check its stats, up, upload ROMs right right from our desktop. We don't have to do anything to the, to the Raspberry Pi. We can do everything right from our desktop as long as they're connected to the same network. So that's the coolest feature, I think. Once that's finished, we're gonna go down to configuration options, click on it. We want to uh, enable RetroPie Manager on boot. So whenever your RetroPie boots up, it's gonna go straight to RetroPie Manager. It's gonna load, make sure it loads up. Click on okay. Then we're gonna click on enable. Then we're gonna click on start RetroPie Manager now. And it's gonna start the RetroPie Manager now. Then we're gonna click on OK. OK. Let's go back. Hit cancel, right? We're gonna go back. Keep going back until we get to this screen again. Now we want to find out what our Raspberry Pi's IP address is. To do that, go down to where it says show IP address, click on it, give it a couple of seconds, and it's going to show you your IP address. So mine says 192.168.1.189. Memorize yours, yours is going to be different. So make sure you memorize yours. I memorized mine. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to open up a, a browser. So let me just minimize this and open up a browser. All right, now we remotely